Hey guys, what's up? Joseph here. I know it's been <laughs> a while since I've actually uploaded, you know, a video to this channel, but I do have something that I wish to talk to you guys about today. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I've been thinking on this subject for a while, um, a few months actually, so, you know, a decent while. And I wanted to talk to you all about the importance of pride within oneself. Um, if you don't know what pride is, okay, first off, it's not necessarily ego. They're not one and the same. They are different things. Um, but pride can feed into ego and ego, ego can feed into pride, you know, especially if you're not careful on how to differentiate the two. And, you know, especially if you don't know enough about yourself to differentiate these things. Um, but let me just say that without pride, I wouldn't be standing here today. I, uh, point blank, I would be dead. Um, so why am I talking about pride? The reason I'm talking about pride is because <clears throat> you have so many people out there who are so immensely insecure, who just take what life throws at them, you know, and they're just like, I, for lack of a better term, deserve this. You know, um, for me, what I've been able to do with pride is I've been able to stand up and say, no, I don't fucking deserve this shit. I deserve better than what life is giving to me right now. And, you know, even if I, um, sorry, my hands itchy, even if I don't deserve what life is giving to me, I can at least step back and say, okay, this is going to come into handy or come in handy later because everything is either a blessing or a lesson. There's no in between. Like, sure, there may be a little bit of gray area, but everything that impacts your life in some sort of capacity is either a blessing or a lesson. You can boil it down to those two things. Now, if you um, are in a relationship where you're, you know, manipulated mentally, you know, abused verbally, you know, and emotionally and mentally and all that stuff, I want you to take a look at this clip right here. Um, it's from Dragon Ball Z. It's, uh, and yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. And I'll, uh, you know, I'll touch on it later. Um, after you guys finish the clip. After all the time I've spent tracking Majin Buu, I will avert him with my own hands. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> You're forgetting what I can do. Vegeta, destroy this nuisance. Kill the Supreme Kai. Kill him! <laughs> the only way is to kill the Supreme Kai. with their own enslaved body. I guess I've been keeping you waiting for a long time, Vegeta, but no more. Absolutely love that clip. One of my fav one of my 
the many reasons why I love Dragon Ball. But essentially, as soon as Vegeta said, I refuse, that was it. He wasn't going to do what Babidi was, you know, trying to get him to do. And so many people do the opposite of what Vegeta does in this situation. And, you know, whether it be a toxic partner or a toxic, you know, um, a parental figure or what have you, they just succumb and say, okay, you know, and it's important to not do that because who are you if you do, you know, succumb to these things and accept what people say about you and say, oh, you know, they're right about me and what have you. Um, I found that when people are talking negative to somebody, it's very rarely a correct assessment of whoever they're speaking to in that manner. What Vegeta does in this scene is he looks within himself and he says, I will not be distracted from this anymore. And that can be interpreted in, you know, in real life as I will not let this you know, emotionally abusive, manipulative person distract me from my happiness anymore. What was going to make Vegeta happy was to, you know, best Goku in combat. And he wasn't about to let Babidi get in the way of that. And I think that that could be a very useful, you know, um, metaphor for somebody out there. So that's why I'm making this video. Because, you know, I don't want you guys to live 21, 22 years of your life like I did, you know, succumbing to most everybody in my life who spoke negatively to me. I don't want you guys to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to find your inner Vegeta, for lack of a better term, and I want you to accept all of your downfalls, you know, all of your failures and everything and say, I'm better than those and I can get past those. I'm going to play another clip for you guys, just one more. And uh, it, ex it pretty much touches on what I just said. Vegeta, are you okay? <laughs> even after that whole volley, you're not even breathing hard. Defeating you won't be easy. You can try all you want, but that will be impossible. Say what? Hmm? <laughs> your fighting style reeks of arrogance. Ego infects your techniques and makes them impure. You think you're entitled to greatness. <laughs> Is that supposed to be insulting? You say I'm arrogant, I say damn right. That's pride, pride in the Saiyan I am, the mighty prince of the ultimate warrior race. <laughs> Impossible to defeat you! Don't make me laugh! I won't surrender control! That's not the man I am! Let Kakarot use his thoughtless ultra instinct all he wants! But I'm the one who's going to crush you, Jiren! And I'll do it my way! Whoa! That's amazing, Vegeta! You've never powered up this much before! His energy is skyrocketing! Now he's even stronger than when he was driving back Jiren a minute ago! But how? What is the deal with these Saiyans and their bottomless power? Jiren may have thought that critique would embarrass Vegeta, but all it actually did was remind him of his pride and awaken even more power. That light around him is very bright! Vegeta sure is getting powerful now, isn't he? You claim I'm no threat to you. I assume that means you won't act like a coward and try to avoid this blast. Bring it. <laughs> Let's go! Give it to him! Pound him with everything you've got! Final blast! was a direct hit! Well, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that scene because it's also, you know, it, like I said, it ties back into what I said. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it, um, Piccolo epitomizes it when he says, 
you know, Jaren thought that that would embarrass Vegeta, but all he did was remind him of his Saiyan pride and, you know, grant him more strength. Essentially, what Vegeta does in this scene is he takes Jiren's words and he uses them as fuel to the fire, you know. Um, and, you know, you've heard the stories of people um, using hate to uh, fuel their uh, motivation and stuff like that. And, yeah, you know, that's it's literally the same thing as this. But where this comes from is pride. That's the important thing. You know, that's the main thing that I'm trying to get at here. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for all this. If you have any more questions, um, please let me know in the comments below. I am kind of sleep deprived while I'm making this video. So if I'm incoherent in any way, please, you know, ask me to specify, ask me to expand upon what I said, because I don't want anyone out there living without their pride intact. Pride is what makes us human. It's what makes us better. It's what makes us stronger. Without pride, we are nothing. You can quote me on that. All right, guys, Joseph out. Peace.